Hello and welcome, folks, to a very special edition of RSF Radio. I'm your host, Joe Monday, and this happens to be the 100th episode of RSF Radio. Wink, wink. You all know what it is. That's right, folks. There's been a hundred-ish of these, which, to me, I just gotta say thanks for listening, honestly, because I, when this project started, I was like, well, let's let's just do it because I want to try it. I want to see what this shit's all about, and you guys have kept listening throughout uh, throughout the years now, and I am a thousand percent appreciative of that. Uh, so, this one's for you. Raise a glass. Cheers, folks. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. By the way, this podcast is 18, 18 and older in some regions and 21 and over for for the, the states. Except for, aren't there some states where the drinking law is lower than 21? Someone needs to correct me on that. Send in all your emails to rsfradioquestions at gmail.com. That way... I'll know for sure. Anyway, folks, it's been it's been a trip, and I thank you for being with me on that journey. Look forward to what's coming after Evo. I'll say that I have plans for this show. Not that I haven't had things all planned. I've got like <laughs> interviews set up like out the fucking ass, man. Like in a way that is causing me anxiety. That's the one thing about this that. It, I don't really talk about often and openly, but lining up people for this show is one of the most stress inducing things like the schedules from, I hate scheduling. It is like, Ooh, that's where the anxiety gets me, it gets me in the chest and like having to deal with and respect other people's time is like, I want to make sure that I'm re- being respectful of people. So I don't want to give people to run around week after week. And then ah, you're not available. Uh, I'm not available. You know how it is. You don't know, know what life's going to throw at you, so it's like, fuck, who knows? But enough about me, enough about the podcast and the history thereof. There's a ton of great episodes. I want, I do want to give a huge thank you to all of the guests of of the past. There's too many, honestly, too many to name. Uh, I would have, I'd run down a list for the rest of the show, the rest of the runtime of this episode. But uh, look up the history of the show. Look at the people who have been guests on this show and give them a follow uh check out what they have going on uh a lot of them have continued to do great things within the community and i i'm honored to have had them on my show and to have had their insight into the many aspects of the the fighting game community and uh, and life outside of the fighting game community and how it intersects with uh, maybe a professional life or a private life uh but to them a huge thank you, and again, a little raise of a glass. Yes, it's it's my objective to finish this glass before the end of the episode, but we're getting there, because there's a couple more cheerses to go around. So, drink up, folks. Not that you can't have a good time without drinking. That's the one thing. Vegas is coming up, Evo. It's the... Actually, when this episode airs, it will most everybody will already be in Vegas. Uh, this will come out the Thursday prior to Vegas. This is kind of like a sealed envelope thing. I don't know what's going on. Who can say what news will come out between now and, and Thursday? Uh, I will certainly be on a plane. Mm, no, I'll be in Vegas already. Trying to hook up meetings and probably do some pre-Evo shopping. You know how it is. Uh, but we'll get to that later on in the episode. About like Evo prep time and kind of what what some good uh, good things to do at Eva once you're there. But we're getting there, folks. Don't worry. It's on the docket. Uh, what, how should we start this show? Uh, I think we should start out by calling out Red Bull because this is something that I think has kind of gotten overlooked a little bit because there's just been so much news. There's like SFL. There were uh, the unfortunate tragedies as talked about in the previous episode. Uh, there's fucking Evo is coming up. Like all this shit's happening. But in the mix there... Uh, Red Bull announced their their series that they're going to run, uh, the Red Bull Conquest, uh, as it was last year, as it will be this year, uh, with a couple of differences. Uh, this time, uh, no Guilty Gear, but Unist is in the mix, which is really awesome for that community. Uh, it's really been great to watch that game grow over the last 
fuck, has it like been a decade yet? If you like did the math on like when that game was initially released, are we at are we at a full a full ten years? Can that game can that game buy cigarettes? Someone let me know. I'm not good at math. Again, schedules and time, not good at it. But Tekken Seven, Street Fighter Five, and Unist are the games that will be featured. Red Bull Conquest this year, so it's gonna work the same. Uh, the regions that are be that they're gonna have their their ra- rally events are it's like a rally rise conquer it, that whole imagery from before, which is actually like pretty dope. They have some really good graphic designers, where it is certainly their passion. Uh, but the rally events are in Orlando, Chicago, Philadelphia, uh, Los Angeles, Houston, San Francisco, Minneapolis. And the finals will be in Santa Monica, which I think we can look ahead. And it hasn't been like fully announced yet, but if you remember the CPT, uh, it has a third super premiere uh, that will be... It was like an unannounced super premiere. And I've all kind of been guessing that like it's probably going to be the Red Bull event, right? Uh, so I'm thinking that will be it. I'm thinking that event in in Santa Monica will be the the final super premiere. Or yeah, I think I'm saying that right. I think I'm remembering that correctly. But it's been a while since I've looked that far ahead at the at the CPT calendar. Uh, yeah, because it's going to be sometime in November. So yeah, that makes sense. Uh, November. Yeah. Yeah. Finals, yeah, late November, Santa Monica. That everything kind of lines up, and we're talking Red Bull here. So they got the they got that Red Bull, that Red Bull pull. Y'all know what it is. They're in the background of every every shot. What's got a mini? I should get a Red Bull mini fridge, and fill it with drinks I like, like whiskey. Mm. Welcome to the show, folks. Uh, no, kind of an aside. Uh, fun fact that we people were talking about this on Twitter, and I just thought that it was funny because people were slamming Red Bulls on on stream, and it didn't occur to people that you know not all the time. This is not all the time. This is not always true. Sometimes people go at that Red Bull hard, and good on them for being able to in- intake all that guarana and that taurine. That is unspeakable amounts of uh, of that business that I don't want in my veins, or maybe I do. But uh, one fancy trick, one TV trick that that you might not know is that when those cans of Red Bull or cans of Monster are on stage, especially at sporting events or something where people could easily get get dehydrated, those cans are actually filled with water, They're like dummy cans. They're instead of filled with the 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 sin drink. They're filled with just water, H2O. So it's like um, a trick of the camera. Uh, but that's just a fun TV fact. Moving on from Red Bull, though, because we got other stuff to talk about. All right. Something that I wanted to... Ooh, maybe... Hmm, we'll get to this. We'll get to this last bit. I'll, I'll move this down the show a little bit. Uh, but the next thing I want to talk about is the Hitbox Cross-Up. Oh, boy. I mm, I am just the way everything the way that this was revealed the timing that the cross up was revealed is just mm, it's chef's kiss I love ladies and gentlemen if you don't know friends and enemies ladies and gentlemen if you don't know this about me I love chaos I love it I align with it it's one of my favorite things and when we see something like the hitbox cross up release have that video release and that website like uh, basically two weeks out from, from Evo. Oh, it's, oh, that is let chaos rain. Let it rain. I was talking to hitbox or about this and it's just, I'm just grin to grin smiling, just knowing, like knowing full well about the, the implications of what they've done here. Cause check it, right? It's before Evo, the biggest tournament in on the planet, right? Where, if you look at specific, and this is not true of, I don't know if pro, other pro tours have adopted this language, but at least in, I would, mm, I, I might want to take a look at that, of what other pro tours are looking at in terms of input devices, because Capcom was forced after the the Gaff Robox Gaff Robox in, incident uh, with Daigo at at a uh, Combo Breaker. 
sorry, a little brain fart, uh, at Combo Breaker, uh, they were like, okay, here's the rules now. And it kind of left a little things up to interpretation, and it lets events decide. And that we talked about that in, in that particular episode. I had Hitbox Horror on to just like kind of go over the rules and, and think about what the implications are. And that's all, that's all good and well. I'm fine. I'm actually fine with that because I, I like putting pressure on events like this uh, in the specific way that Hitbox did it. Because if you look at the ruling, it's like, DualShock 4, you're good. You're good. Just so long as that when you use the stick input, and then you use a button input for a direction, that you give up the usage of one or the other. Which, I think if you you could lawyerly work your way around that language in such a way to say, well, if you press the stick on the, on the, on the cross-up, the hitbox cross-up, and then press with directional button, you give up the direct the, the initial direction. You give it up, or it cancels. Out. So it's one of those things that it's it's not clear in the language, and this kind of pushes that boundary. The double smart thing that they did, the thing that actually is the most hilarious to me, is that they didn't release it as a product that you can buy outright. They have one. They have them made. There's, there's, I am sure if they're, they're going to, I am a hundred percent positive, sure, entirely positive. They have these at Evo. Like I, I will go and use one and I'll laugh. Uh, for other, uh, the reason that I love chaos, not because I love the input device itself. I think it's flawed in ways that are, we'll get into that, but you can't buy it. What you can do is put money up for a Kickstarter for the thing, which protects you as a person who would be interested in it. Say, say you see this thing, say that you, you see how they've, they've shown it on the website and they show that all the buttons and all the stick configurations lines up perfectly with a DualShock 4. You're good to go. They show all that stuff. They show what it's capable of. The video is magnificent. Uh, and it, it's magnificent in ways that people who already play on hitboxes know that it's good, but like could be there are some things about this this cross up controller where like if you if you figure what you can actually do with just a base hitbox or a base stick, it's actually not really better in a lot of ways. It's it's kinda it kind of you're like stepping over your own like toes, right? It's like it's like a long ear syndrome, right? You're just tripping over it. But 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 they have they posted it as a Kickstarter, a Kickstarter. So you don't actually you are not obligated to put that money forward if said controller is banned from tournaments. So go ahead. Who gives a fuck? Let the people know I'm actually interested in this, and then let then let Capcom. It's like one of those things where if this gets so much attention, where people are like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll front, I'll front for this, uh, and then Capcom is like, wait, no, actually, hold on, let us look again at these rules, which I actually don't think they will. I don't think they'll move forward on any of the ruling. Here's why, because. The ruling states that it is by event. So, I mean, look at what, like, Full Schedule did, right? Like, he got, that particular controller got banned at certain, at, at, at events, but then he changed the way that it input so that it was, like, tournament legal, right? Oh, man, it's got me, I'm all, I'm, I'm excited about this. Because the other thing about it, the, 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 the hitbox cross-up, with the stick and the buttons on inputs on the right, it's someone who plays on hitbox. I'm like, this is a, in fact, a lesser, like, this isn't like that great. Actually, like it can do all of the things that hit hitbox can do, but like kind of worse. I hear people's arguments saying that like, Oh, you can do like three sixties on it better, but like act, actually no, like, but actually no, <laughs> like they're way easier on a hitbox. Uh, if you, you know, either by doing it in multiple methods that you can do it on a hitbox by either doing the slide method or like the left, right, down, up. And you can, it's just, the, I've talked about this before, but the placement of where the buttons are on a hitbox may seem like they're close together initially, but when you think about it in like practicality, it totally makes sense in like it, it functions correctly that way. Now with all the buttons on all like willy nilly in every direction above where your attack inputs are, it's, you got stick over here. It's hey, 
I get it. That could be fine for some people. Let them, let them do it. Because that's the other end of it, is that if this allows for more accessibility, fucking great. Like, good. That's awesome. I've seen some other people even say, uh, and this was before the, the, the cross-up was even announced, where they were like, man, I really want to play this game with a fight stick, but I have no access to my other the other stick i have no access to the to the joystick all i have is the directional from my from my joystick i don't have a second imp- solves that problem because it has the same functionality as a dual shock 4 think about that moving forward in conversations i love it i love it i love the chaos let it rain let it rain upon evo as the is another plague. This is like the plagues that are being brought upon Evo. We got the locusts flying in from God knows where, the, what can be seen on weather radar, and now the cross-up, this unholy matrimony of stick and buttons. <laughs> know, your, know your allegiance uh, and, and pray to your God because the end times are upon us. Uh, oh, God. It, mm, it is so happy about this. I love bugs. All right, enough about the cross-up. I think it's great, specifically because I love chaos. If you, if you have a different opinion or you think it's a cheap box, right ahead. Try one out. It'll be at Evo. I promise you that. Uh, before we get to other Evo stuff, though, I do want to talk about SFL voting results. But before I want to talk about SFL voting results, I want to give a huge, a huge thank you, a big cheers to you. Mama Dow, thank you, Carolyn, for your continued efforts within the community. Uh, you have been a beacon of light and a beacon of hope uh, for for all the Cap Cops. Out. She's the new commander in chief of the Cap Cops, and she is cracking down on all the other delinquents within her precinct. And to you, Mama Dow, I give you cheers. Mmm. Got to do it rude that way for the people who only listen to the audio, which is the majority of you, so fucking deal. Anyway, uh, if you don't know what happened, so here's how it went down. Here's the rub. Okay, leading up to the end of voting, it was like, okay, it's going to end up at 11 p.m. Pacific time. You can vote all the way up until then. And shit was changing all the way around. People were releasing videos, like last minute things, like here we go, it could be th- this person, it could be this other person. It, shit got mixed. Shit got mixed. The the top six, top ten people was it was going it was willy nilly all over the place with names and, and numbers. I was checking in, like, oh damn, that's like cool that this person got all this uh this love this late in the game. And then some people were like, well, don't vote for me anymore. Shift your vote to this person. And it's like, wow, that there's some, some backstabbery going on. I love it. I love it. I love chaos. Uh, but perhaps the most chaotic thing unbeknownst to everybody was that smash GG was like, Hey, remember when you said 11 o'clock, how you feel if it was 10 o'clock? automatically who can no everybody's asleep already nah fuck it uh we're done uh closing closing votes 10 p.m that's what you said right thanks mass gg so everyone who was like looking for a last a literal last minute push didn't get to take advantage of that uh because voting ended at 10 but at 10 o'clock guess who was awake it's not this is not even her job by the way she has like fuck all to do with SFL. She was awake, eleven o'clock or ten o'clock Pacific time, and she was like, "Oh shit, let me hold on. Let me see where the fire is. Let me spray this big giant fuck you hose to be like, okay, where's the fire? I need to find it." Out there talking to Smash GG people, she got she got people involved that don't even fucking work there anymore. Shout outs to Bear. What's good? On, what's good, dude? Uh, but. Nothing could be done, unfortunately. Could not open it up because the Smash GG engineers were all asleep. They were all asleep. So everyone was kind of waiting, like, well, I guess we'll see what happens when they wake up at, like, 6 o'clock Pacific time. And we'll see what fucking happens, man. We don't know. We don't know how the voting is going to be because it closed with these four people on top. They closed with Sherry, Guilty, Automatic, and Tommy Two-Step. All, by the way, all great... I should also say this. All of the top ten great players and 
good people in the community that I think would be good representations of like a good smattering of people for a at least an an interesting show for the SFL. I don't know, necessarily know if it's good for like the SFL global at large if everyone was involved because you also have to consider that the winners will then go on to play SFL Japan, which again, if you listen to the episode with um, with Doc Fugu, the way that they decide people is, is far different and the level of skill that you're going to get from all of those people is much different for the current season of the SFL. So it doesn't... It's like kind of like oil and water. They don't necessarily mix. Uh, we'll see. I imagine that to be a real horror show, but that's that's in the future. Regardless, voting close. We got Sherry Janix. We got Guilty. Automatic. Tommy Two Step. Six o'clock rolls around. The engineers are like, "Fuck, man, we can't. We're done. That's it. That's the voting. It's closed. That's final." Smash GG. Welcome. Smash GG, folks. Is. Oh boy, that's quite a bracket web- website. All right, it's one of those things. It's Smash GG is the the Buster Sword of bracket websites. When you look at it, you're like, damn, that's a cool that's a cool sword. I bet that could deal some real fucking. You can it's got you can make it do whatever you want. You can slot some materia in there. It's it's incredible. But then if you think about how an actual human has to use that shit, it becomes like this hilarious unwieldy like like big flopping it, it's terrible folks it if you're a human being trying to use smash gg it is like the user experience is worse than street fighter 5 when it first came out it's terrible it's trash but it also has all the bells and whistles that you would actually have wanted street fighter 5 to come out with as, as a like it's oh man it's that's not, so that's not even a great comparison because it's have you ever seen that picture of that enormous swiss army knife the one that's got like fucking 10,000 options that you can do but it's like it it's only like like five inches long this way but then it's like a fucking foot like a, a foot the other way so it's this long like hilarious thing where it's like none of these tools are actually useful because they're connected to this foot of dumb that you connect it's hilarious and that's kind of what smash gg is it can do everything you want but it's also this unwieldy piece of shit that no one actually would want to use you would just use a knife if you wanted a knife. You, it just. There are better solutions here, and I, I wish them the best in the future. I hope they get their shit figured out because it's. It, and don't even like. Don't even ask me to use the shit mobile because that shit just don't work. We all know. All right, so that's one horror show. They've ended up on Sherry, Guilty, Automatic, and Tommy Two Step. All great players. Uh, you know, Sherry has been on the show. Automatic has been on the show. Uh, listen to those episodes. They were great guests. In the future, I'll probably need to plan to get Guilty and Tommy Two Step on at some point. Uh, Tommy Two Step, if you're not familiar with him, great player from Texas. I've seen him around events at at other locations. So it's like he's one of those faces that you recognize. I've never met him personally. I'll, I'll introduce myself here at uh, Evo coming up just to get that foot in the door. So that, I, I think his video was great work and I look forward to seeing what he has to do in the future. Uh, we all know guilty. She's, he's been in the, she's been around the block. Uh, you've seen her face on a couple places, uh, sponsored by graft, uh, has done works with Goichi in the past, like all that good. Yeah, there's a really good, and I wonder if it's archived that Minot, uh, practical video with her and Goichi just talking about Monot and how to play her. Uh, even coming from like a be- beginner's perspective. Uh, it's good shit. Uh, but anyway, looking forward to seeing those players out there. I'm looking forward to like a quarter of the people who voted actually watching or supporting the SFL, which questionable whether that will happen or not. Probably not. I don't know. Hopefully they, they get some better post-production on the SFL. There are some things that they can do, I think, from a show standpoint that could could benefit the viewer experience, uh, especially considering that they definitely have a lot of post-production time to work on those shows, but eh, who can say? Who can say how much actual money is getting put into that? It's not like... I actually question that, of of how much is actually riding on that show. Or like, what... A, what's the back end even look like of that shit? What is their returns? Like I'm, it is puzzling to, to see where or what their plans are for even, even for that when like it's this invitational, but it's also kind of like a weird invitational that has these like dumb fucking rules about character bands and all that shit. But is it interesting to the people who would also want to support that show? I don't know. 
who could say, but we've talked about the SFL enough on this show. So hopefully that goes well for all those players. It has been quite a journey uh, over that shit show of voting, but here we are looking forward to it. All right. Next topic. What do I got here? Before we talk about Evo, kind of one thing that I'd, I just wanted to touch upon only because I've seen it in, in discourse, especially within the biggest game, the smash community. There was a, whole issue of this shit, which I'm not going to get into details of because I I don't know the details of it, so I don't really care. But uh, cancel culture is a thing that came up. You can't say anything on the internet anymore. You can't make a mistake. You gotta leave room for these people to, to grow and become the people that they're going to be, which in some degrees I can say, you know what, that makes sense if for kids who are using the internet, especially kids who are using their real fucking government ass name on the internet, or people who like have a past that moving forward trying to make that shit work, God, that sounds like a nightmare. The kids have to be warned about all this shit growing up. It's just internet, like, like, call, <sighs> literacy, right? Internet literacy. You gotta like know what the fuck you're doing, right? But no one warns these kids. This shit sticks around. Anyway, you worry about, if I see like a lot of people worried, like, I don't want things that I, like, worried about cancer culture. It's just, it's tired, man. Because think, think about, in my mind, yo, like, cancel culture is not even real. It can't be real, right? You can't have someone go out there and beat their significant other to a, like, close to death situation and then have them be fully supported by the community, Right? Of course I'm talking about Chris Brown, right? Who who did you think I was talking about? You think I was talking about Sam Show Top 8 at Evo? No, I couldn't be talking about that. Can't, it's not real, right? Because you can't have people winning these like amazing awards and having done like sinister things to their to their to their loved ones. Yeah. You know? Of course I'm talking about Sean Penn. Who did you think I was talking? I can't be talking about anyone that uh, that would be involved in the fighting game community, right? So, like, until something... Like, like fucking people... Until, like, something like... Who has done something truly sinister and never apologized for it actually gets cancelled, then, like, fuck off. That's just not real. Like, because what do angry people on the internet even fucking accomplish, right? Maybe you... Like, someone of a position of privilege gets a couple days of... Uh, online headache before a couple months of an online headache before it all fucking disappears. I mean, shit. Even the one of the co-owners of Echo Fox, the one who did say some racist shit, got like an extension because you know maybe they should stick around for another week because we don't know what to fucking do. We need their money. We need their opinion as as an enormous company that needs to move forward in the the esports arenas. Just I don't know. Fuck off with that. Like and don't and also like don't come at me like you're worried about like people. Hmm. I could get into it, but I won't. It's one of those things where it's like, it's. I see a lot of people who I respect who are in like no danger of of ever saying anything that is like truly sinister. Being like, oh, I'm so worried that like some like my words might be con- misconstrued, or maybe I'm talking to a woman, I, I, or uh, and I'll put a hand on a shoulder as a friend, and they'll say, oh, it was sexual assault. Like my guy, like nah, like the number of like of women who re- report false claims of rape is like you, know, th- you gotta think about it. It's either between two and ten percent. The numbers show. But then you also have to look at the number of actual sexual assault that is not reported, which it far outweighs the number of people who have had misreport, like false claims of sexual assault. And then you look at the numbers of the actual convictions based on false reports of sexual assault. And it's like, I think in like, it's, mm, don't quote me on this, but the last number I looked at was from 2010 and it was like five out of, 200 and some cases actually ended at a conviction, which then, then got overturned because actual evidence was submitted. I'm sorry. A little heated, a little heated because listen, guys, you don't have to worry about it. Like it, 
it's effectively not a thing. The people who would lead you to believe that the numbers prove that it's a thing might be problematic uh, with the numbers or things that they're showing you or things that they might want to get away with or them trying not to be quote unquote canceled when actually none of that shit works in the first place. Fuck Chris Brown. Anyway, Rihanna for life. She bay. Bay for life. Anyway, what's good? Let's talk about Evo and Evo predictions. Let's talk about some good stuff. Something to be excited about. Sorry about that hard transition. Let's all sit, take a sit. Seat back in your chair. Take a sip with me. If you are a legal age, of course, also drink responsibly. No, I am not sponsored by any alcohol beverage industry, but if I were to be courted by one, I can't say I wouldn't agree to one. Wink, wink to all the spot potential sponsors out there. No, not actually. Anyway, Evo predictions. Uh, it, hmm. Evo this year, man. It is... The field is fucking wide. Holy shit. Let's just talk about the the schedule. Let's start there, right? Friday, Soul Calibur 6. All the way through Friday. Makes sense. Lowest number of entrants. You, you can run through... Evo is a big enough tournament where you can run through that bracket in a day. Fine. I like it. Then comes Saturday. Unist. Dragon Ball Fighters. Sam Show. And then MK11. That all pretty much tracks. That that all makes sense in terms of, again, player turnout and how things work in terms of what brackets are you running at the same time as that. They'll probably have the two big stage shows going up at the same time where you can have finals on the stage on the right uh, and then pools running on the stage on the left for, for, for big games. And then, of course, you have all that. Hmm. Thinking to myself... Will there be three stages? I'm cur- I am curious about this because I would almost think that people would want Smash to get a lot more pools time and a lot more pools viewership. Will they dedicate more time to that? Hmm. I wonder. Anyway, then comes Sunday, the big show. Starting out. Blaz Blue cross tag battle. Number one. Number two, Street Fighter V. Early finish for the Street Fighter fans, but do not leave that arena. Stick around for some good ass Tekken. Tekken 7 coming up next. Then we got Smash to end it. That'll be the nightcap. And the, here's what most excites me about this lineup. And it is because of all the people who've been out there teasing on the on the social media teasing through it like all the course of the year from back in December even teasing of what might come about that specific order I don't necessarily know if we're going to get much from Blasbu cross tag battle maybe they we've got like a line of characters coming up from Blasbu maybe another guilty gear question mark that that would tr- if there is another guilty gear coming out like I will eat a hat hot damn that is some that would be some hot shit. That would be a party starter. If there was another Guilty Gear coming out, that would be insane. I don't, I don't necessarily think that's the case. But that's like the... If you have some like wishes of what could be announced, it's like, man, another Guilty Gear? Might be the year for that. Could be exciting. Who knows? Who could say? But... Let's say it's something that's like mildly exciting for the community that loves like those games, right? The Blast Blue cross tag battle games, right? Let's say it's something like that. Okay, cool. That's fun. Then you get to Street Fighter. I feel like they've been teasing some hot shit for quite some time. Now, if you remember, before Capcom Cup, Capcom had been giving messaging out there, being like, it's going to be a big year. Like, Capcom Cup, look forward to it. We got big announcements. And then, like, right at the last minute, right at the last minute, like, basically the weekend of, they were like, ooh, actually, hold on. We're not ready. Uh, Please bear with us uh, as we roll out announcements for the upcoming, you know, what's to come for Street Fighter V. It was along that line of, of language. This was all from, I think Ono said this stuff on Twitter, like uh, the weekend of, of just being like, oh, by the way, sorry. I, like, I greatly apologize for my team. We're not, we're not ready to show you yet. 
And then we've had people like the street rider out there being like, hey, 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 I know what's on the horizon. I can't speak of it. I can't say its name, but it's exciting. And again, that's like fucking months ago. People have been rolling on this. So it it has something to do with Street Fighter V. What is coming? My My guess, my guess for Street Fighter is that they will say, here is Ultra Street Fighter V. Here is everything that is coming. I, I do not think it will be a, and you can play it today or play it tomorrow. I, I do not think it'll be a situation. I think they will roll out a whole, like, here's our pricing for the future. Like, here's, like, the cost of what everything's going to be. Like, a huge, like, seed change of how things are. That's, like, the big hope, that it'll be all of that. It will be, like, the second V-Skill, a second Critical Art, all that shit for and like here they will show you all the new characters like fmv like they will show fmv uh <laughs> no i don't think it'll be fmv that would be actually the best like you know how they did that cg trailer for the latest season where it's like here's these new guys we got blanca we got g all that stuff they named those characters at the time until the the after and the end of that trailer, but I think it'll be that trailer. I think that that tr- the, a new trailer that shows all the new characters for Ultra Street Fighter Five. It'll match up to Indestructible, so that'll be great. Uh, and then it, it's available at a time at a certain time. I don't know. I would ha- hmm. If I looked at the CPT schedule to see when the largest time in between premieres is. I would assume it's like right after the, that major and then leading up to the next major. That's like in my mind's eye how I might see it. If I was someone who worked at Capcom and if I was smart, that's how I might plan things out on the timeline. That actually might line No, that doesn't line up with Christmas time. That's not no cuz then that's like late November. Then we're talking like that's when the CPT is and I don't know. I don't think that they can let people hang out on a limb for for that long from now until late November, early December. Like the fi- like Capcom Pro Tour finals. I can't do that. I don't think that's the case, but but anyway, I, I, like again, don't think they're going to announce Street Fighter 6. If they do, it'll be for the stadium or some shit and it'll be a horrible mistake and I'll love it because I love me some chaos. Uh, but next up, Tekken. Here's the thing. Here's the thing that gets me excited about Tekken. You know, because they put Tekken after Street Fighter, you know what they have coming. It's got to be big. I'm looking forward to it. It. I imagine it is a not just one, not two, but a whole package of characters for like a like a final season of Tekken Seven. Looking forward to that. And I think. Here's my dream announcement situation, is that they have Tekken, right? And it leads into Smash. What better way to lead into Smash than have, like, a a Smash character show up in Tekken? I'm not talking about your Marios. I don't think that's a thing that would ever happen. I'm talking about, like, put, like, a Marth in there. Put, like, a Pauliner in there, Right? Someone that looks uh, like Wii Fit Trainer. Put Wii Fit Trainer in Tekken 7. God, could you imagine Wii Fit Trainer in Tekken 7? Her juggle combos would be ridiculous. She'd be the most balanced character out there. Lean back in your chair and take a sip. Alright, done with my bad jokes. But, do I think it's within the realm of possibility? Mm-hmm. I'm waffling on that. I don't think it. I don't. I don't actually think that will be the case. But would it be the most exciting thing that they could do? Would it be the most electrifying announcement of the night? I think Tekken Seven, uh, leveraging some kind of agreement between Nintendo to be like, hey, can we get a character that you don't necessarily use in other properties just to use in Tekken Seven? Because they've had deals before. I mean, they got fucking Negan for reasons. So, so fucking sure, whatever. Who cares? Uh, get one of those those characters. Meh, it probably won't be a Fire Emblem character. Not with the the rise of Fire Emblem, as it were. New game just came out, and apparently people fucking love it. It's you know, it's great. Tits out for it. All right. Uh, then who who do you get? A Ganondorf. Ooh, actually, 
No, you can't put a link. You can't put Ganon. But what if you had Ganon? Ganon and Tekken 7? You already got an Akuma. Ganon and T7? That's a thought I haven't thought of before. And that excites me. You got that like... Ooh, mm, okay, now mm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it now. I'm liking that. I, I'm scratching my beard over the thought of it. That actually sounds pretty good. Do I think that will actually be the case? Fuck no. But... Would that be would that be fun? I think so. Because here's the thing about new Smash fans. People who play Smash, the crossover is actually pretty good. Look at that chart that we'd put out. There's a lot of arrows extending from the Smash. Uh, and I think that the people who are in the current Smash community are kind of like the people who have rolled into the Street Fighter V community. There's a lot of like brand new players, but this is their first foray into fighting games, and they say, Wow, I like this game. But also when I watch streams and tournaments, there are also like other games going on. When I see love like between cross community, I like that's the fucking best. That shit is incredible. When you can get people from the Smash community interested in other games because they're gonna have to sit through if they want to see, they're gonna have to sit through some Tekken. And what if in Tekken they say, "Hey, here's a game. Here's a here's Bayonetta. Here is a Bayonetta from the game that you love in our game now." Maybe you should try Tekken 7. After you saw those hype files, after you saw Tasty C popping off, popping off in, inside the arena, and you go, wow, that man seems very excited. How, how could I possibly get into this? There's not a character in your game that I like. Harumph, I'm from the Smash community. What's that you say? You got a Bayonetta. Legasp. Could be exciting. But I don't know. What the fuck do I know about marketing? Anyway, that's kind of my predictions about how, who do I think will win? Street Fighter V, that's the only thing I can speak intelligently of in terms of who might win uh, in Street Fighter V is fucking no one. I don't I have no fucking clue. The pools are are deep. The pools are wide. The water, who knows? There's sharks everywhere. It's If someone could accurately predict top eight for, for Street Fighter V, that's like some Nostradamus shit. I'd believe any shit they tell me after that. If they can get all top eight, all correctly, all the way through, pick the finals, pick the winner, and the runners up, I, I, I will believe. I will believe in any word, any shit you tell me. You tell me that. Ugh, you can predict that. My goodness. But anyway, folks, that's a show. I think that's a, that's going to do it for us. Oh, by the way, if you do want to do like some predictions of your own, you can see a lot of history up to like 2017. I don't think it goes back to 2016, but uh, I'll say that go to FG Combo. It's like FGC Ombo. The C is the start of co- Combo. You, you fought play on words fg combo write it out you'll get it go to uh, twitter.com fg combo that's who you want to look at that's the website you want to look at because he lays out all this stuff uh he just added all like out of fucking nowhere if you want to look at player matchups like he's got that you can look at how a player has performed against another but you just line it up and look at it and see all the results right next to each other uh I would also recommend going to the Game 2K, the Game Twalk, um, on Twitter.com, or just Game 2K, mm, Game 2K.com. Is that it, or is it something else? I should know this by now. I believe it's just dot, that dot com. Anyway, go there. Whole bunch of stats and info for you to look at, like player histories and and matchups and all that shit. How they perform in top eights, like. All of that is listed out in a very easy to, to read and easy to peruse way. If you want all the data, it's out there. Look it up. But that's the show, folks. Again, I'll finish my drink and say another cheers to you, the listener, for sticking around for a hundred ish episodes. We're over under now, but who's fucking counting? I guess I am. So thanks for doing that. I might I I greatly appreciate your patronage. That has been uh, fantastic to get your feedback over the years as well. Again, you can write in at uh, rsfradioquestions at gmail.com. That's the email address you want to send any questions to. Or, you know, if you have, like, some, some like, hey, you fucked up here, uh, let me know, and I have corrections later on. If Because, you know, I'm not always right. You know, this, I'm liable to make mistakes. I'm human. I'll grow. 
let me know. I'll, I will gladly apologize for my own follies. Uh, it's the only way to, to improve yourself is to fail. Uh, but that's a show, folks. Thank you for sticking around for over the years, and I will see you next week on another edition of RSF Radio. But until then, take care.